I'm a long-time Mac user, and I recently decided to step out of Apple's walled garden to try something new. Installing Ubuntu on my Mac. Spoiler alert, it wasn't as straightforward as I thought. Today, I'm sharing what I learned, the surprises I encountered, and tips for anyone wanting to try this. Why install Linux on a Mac? I've been a Mac OS fan forever. Its sleek interface, rock-solid reliability, and effortless flow are hard to beat. But I got curious about Linux, wanted to step outside Apple's ecosystem to broaden my horizons and find new inspiration. Picking a Linux distribution is both exciting and daunting with so many choices. Tiny Sleet has. Its entire system is a mind-blowing 800 kilobytes, smaller than a meme file. I also considered elementary OS, which mimics Mac OS's look and feel, but as a Linux beginner, I didn't want anything too extreme and try to embarrass more Linux looks and feel. I needed something popular and approachable. A Reddit thread put it perfectly. An average user struggles to fix issues in Windows, let alone Linux. They need an OS where help is a Google search away. That resonated with me, and the consensus was clear. Just use Ubuntu. So, Ubuntu's my starting point. I didn't want to ditch Mac OS entirely, so I chose a virtual machine to run Ubuntu safely. We can take advantage of the magic of virtualization. In simple terms, it lets an operating system become an app and let it run isolated. There are many software options to do the virtualization. Mostly I can find these two big names, VMware Fusion and VirtualBox. I used both before, but I feel VMware is much snappier. So I will use it to try out Ubuntu. Fun fact, it turns out that there are two types of virtualization. VMware is the type one of hypervisors, which means it can directly access underlying machine resources compared to type two, which is VirtualBox using. It requires to negotiate resource allocation allocation with the operating system. To simplify, the Type 1 got more control directly, therefore it can let the virtualization run smoother. I thought after choosing the Linux distribution, it turns out that there are so many things to choose. It reminded me of Apple's old jab at Microsoft for having too many Windows Vista versions. Windows Vista comes with Home Basic, home premium, business and ultimate versions, but Mac OS only has one ultimate version. For Ubuntu, it seems that they also learn it from Microsoft, but I think it is easy to pick. Core, desktop, pro, server. I'm not a pro or running server. And from their website mentioned that the core version is for embedded devices. Even though I'm using the MacBook Pro notebook, I think the desktop version is the version I need. I download the ISO image from their website and I launch the VMware. Just drop and drop the ISO to follow the instructions. Installation should be easy and strict. Oops, my Mac's CPU architecture wasn't compatible. I'm using an Apple Silicon Mac. So the regular version of Ubuntu does not fit on my computer. It turns out I need to download the ARM version. By the way, I think Apple did a very good job on doing this kind of compatibility support. Freaking speaking, I don't think a regular user understands what ARM version or x86 version is. Anyways, let's boot up the Ubuntu installation. Exploring Ubuntu's look and feel. As a Mac user, I always pay attention to the look and feel of the software. I noticed that Ubuntu has a Mac-like vibe. See the cursor, also black with white border. In Apple, they have a UI kit to control the look and feel, which means Apple's system shines. In Linux, they also have their own environment they call it GNOME. It is not only installed in Ubuntu, many Linux builds can also install it to have a Linux desktop. It also can be replaced, but I'm fine with the GNOME right now. Their window renders like Mac OS 2. It adopts the round corner for the window. They even added a dropped shadow around the window. So familiar. But the traffic light buttons are so different. Officially, Apple called it window control buttons. It is always on the left side, but in Ubuntu, it is on the right side. I don't know whether it is influenced by preconceptions. I think the left side makes more sense anyways. On the top, we have a Ubuntu top bar in Mac OS, which is called App Menu Bar. I think Ubuntu doesn't use the same design pattern as Mac OS. Mac OS all applications share the same App Menu Bar, but Windows or Ubuntu is adopting the same patterns. Also, obviously, they won't have an Apple logo on the left. Instead, they have an activities corner. It is complex. It is like the Windows start menu, but it is not the same thing. In the middle of the top bar, they have date and time. It is not so notch friendly. On the right side, it is the system menu. It is more like the status menus on Mac OS. Let's go back to the main installation process. Installing Ubuntu. Wow, that's a little scary on the steps. It seems that a long journey to go in order to install Ubuntu. One, two. 13, 14, 15. There are 15 steps to go to install Ubuntu. Choosing language, English, accessibility, keyboard layout, English US. Connect to the internet. You can just detect my connection, right? Is the update available? I want to save some time. Just skip. What do I want to do with Ubuntu? 
Obviously, if I just want to try, I can just close in the first place. Why wait so long for me to answer this? Next, how would I like to install Ubuntu? Ubuntu introduces some automated installation support, which allows you to install some software packages using some technical settings, which is a great relief for system admin. You can set up some machines that have pre-installed software, and after install, it is okay to go. It is something that Apple doesn't have. Apple prefers a clean installation on the operating system. After installation is complete, they rely on their own tools called Apple Configurator to do some bulk machine setup. Okay, next, what apps would you like to install to start with? I don't know. Just give me some default selection. I would like to do it myself. Recommend proprietary software? I think I can leave it at the moment. How do you want to install Ubuntu? I think I will stay with the default encryption. At the moment, no encryption. Okay, creating the user account, and I will assign a weak password. Time zone. Don't you detect my time zone automatically? Review my choice. Finally, such a long journey. Oh yes, it is the Plucky Puffin. It is their symbol for this Ubuntu release. Let's see some commercial from Ubuntu. They are promoting some popular software. Let's see whether I can recognize some of them. Spotify, Visual Studio Code, Blender, or even Steam, Firefox. Okay, I should feel comfortable with Ubuntu. Let's start with the Activities Corner. I can try out the LibreOffice Writer, so I can write a script during my Ubuntu installation. Let's try to write something, see whether it can get back after installation. Rhythm Box. What is this? It is a music program, so I treat it as iTunes. Does it come with some music by default? No. No podcast as well, but interestingly, it comes with some radio. You can have some radio during installation. It is cool. You can open Firefox. You can go to YouTube. You can go to our channel and subscribe during installation. That's cool. You know, how boring when installing Mac OS. And there are so many apps by default here. Their app has more than one page. Oops. Ubuntu is finished installation. It takes around five minutes to install. Very quick. Let's reboot and see the freshly installed Ubuntu. After installation, at the login screen, I noticed the gear icon with options for Ubuntu or Ubuntu on Zorg. I wasn't sure what this meant, so I did some digging. Turns out, Linux uses something called a display server protocol to manage the display. Zorg is a well-known but older protocol, while Wayland is the newer modern one. Time to log in with my weak password. Share data to improve Ubuntu. Sure, why not? Next. But I noticed the next button jumps from the bottom right to the top. Why not keep it consistent? Then finish. Oh, my document I tried to save during installation. Gone. Lesson learned. Don't save files during installation. I clicked the show apps icon, but some apps I saw during installation are missing. Hmm. Still, there's so much to explore on this new platform. Stay tuned for more and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.